Welcome, thank you for tuning in. I'm here with Pastor Shane. Good to see you, Caleb. Come Thanks on. Thanks for coming again. Yep. Hey, um, this, today we're talking about this question. Are you ready? Is isolation bad for humanity? Okay. Well, I think there's, there's a couple different things at play. First is the dynamic of loneliness. So momentary intentional times of seclusion and um, solitude is a very healthy spiritual practice. We see that and, with Jesus. Yeah, Jesus yeah. says all the time, like, yeah. like he, he throws demons out of people all night because yeah. nothing's more empowering than spending <laughs> the night with demon possessed people. And then, and then he knows, there's this sense in, in Mark 5, I think, he just, he's like, he knows, oh goodness, tomorrow's gonna be more packed. I gotta get out of here. Yeah. And so he, he goes to be by himself and, um, and Peter, and you also see this in the Passion story too, where it's a subtle thing that says that every night he spent the night on the Mount of Olives. Well, the Mount of Olives is the world's biggest cemetery. What better way to get solitude than to sleep between the tombstones at night, right? <laughs> People would be like, oh, we'll yeah, just yeah. wait to see him in the morning, right? Yeah. So he's pretty strategic. Yeah. So, so Peter knows where Jesus' spot is, and he says, Nate, what are you doing? Everybody's waiting on you. And he goes, really? Everybody? Then let's go somewhere else. So what you see in Jesus' life was a particular acknowledgement of a rhythm that includes rest, intentional rest, solitude, moments like that. Yeah. So you have solitude that's healthy, or we could say isolation that's healthy. But then you have this thing that crosses over into loneliness. Yeah. And then you have several dynamics around that, like if solitude itself makes us lonely, then we've got a problem that we need to work out in our spiritual practice. Yeah. Um, but too much solitude starts to bring us awareness of our physical disconnection, yeah. which then makes us long for more connection. And then yeah. we reach out in all kinds of destructive ways. Um, you know, sleeping with everything under the sun that's willing. Like that's being that promiscuous and objectifying people. A lot of people that do that aren't bad people. They're just profoundly disconnected and they're trying in any way they can to do it. This is, this is actually one of the concerns I have with them closing pubs is guys don't go to pubs to drink. If your whole goal is to drink, you can drink for four times cheaper at home. You can go to Dan Murphy's, get the jumbo case of liquor, like flip, and you can go sit on your own if your whole goal is to, is to drink. Guys don't drink in pubs. They don't, well, they don't go to pubs to drink. They go to pubs for community. And so if you shut down their community, which unfortunately at this point is the wise move, you start to um, exacerbate the isolation part. So I think we have to discuss the difference between solitude, which is healthy, yeah. and loneliness, which is the first thing God said was not good, yeah, that's right. right? And so I think solitude, what makes solitude great is that it's intentional, yeah. it's focused, and it has a set time, right? So intentional, focus, set time. Part of the, part of the anxiety now is you got to isolate. How long? I don't know. So an undefined period yep. of disconnection, that is excessively anxiety provoking. Yep. Now, the truth of it is, is that if any of us were in contact with this thing, or could have been, for the sake of of the vulnerable, we yep. need, I mean, I, to, yeah. yeah, well, my, my pastor's had a heart transplant. Yeah, well, he has no immune system. Yep. Well, I gotta think about him, Absolutely. right? So, um, so, but then there's a question underneath the question. And so the question is, solitude good, loneliness bad. Solitude has these things there. It's intentional, it's, it's, it's focused, and it's limited, right? Um, and those are good things. Um, isolation, bad undetermined amount of time, anxiety provoking, there's so many unknowns. And so if you have to isolate, the good thing is, is that the world's getting better, right? So like people go, oh, wait a minute, hang on. A hundred years ago with the Spanish flu, you know how many ventilators they had? Before electricity, I mean, ventilators they had, people just died, right? So it, it's, it, it, it's better. And in terms of not living isolated, we have more tools at our disposal than we ever have before. Yeah. You've got more online platforms than ever. You've got more entertainment options than ever. You can stay connected with your friends. Uh, we're doing it right now over the internet, Absolutely. right? So, um, so you could do that. And I, I wrote down a couple of things that I can't remember off the top of my head, but I wrote them down on my phone. Um, in terms of just some just some practical things to make them to you know to get the most of it, I, I'd say a couple of things. One, stick to a routine. Yep. Like so, um, even if you're isolated and quarantined, um, still get up in the morning, take a shower, get yep. ready, things like this. 
um, um, make you more, well, less anxious. Yep. Uh, two, dress for the social life you want, not the social life you have, right? So, right. Um, so you, you don't, you don't want to get caught into, if you dress like a slob, you'll feel like a slob yeah. and the, the whole thing goes on there. Um, if you're allowed to by law, go out for at least once a day. Uh, it, even if it's walking around your back door in the light, it gives you more vitamin D, fresh air, things like this. Um, find some time to move each day. Um, that's, that's an important, um, um, thing. Uh, reach out to others and stay connected through all the online platforms. Um, you could do that. And, and I think that we should stay hydrated and eat well in the middle of it as well as we can. Um, that, that it's not a time to just junk out and get, it's just that those things make us feel worse. Yeah. And, and I think it's now's the time to pick up a project yeah. that you've been putting off. Read the three books that you've never had time to read. Well, you yeah. got tons of time now. Got all the time. So be a learner. Um, yeah. Choose an online platform and learn as much as you can. And these sorts of things keep our brain active and, and they and they keep our eyes light. And the other the other thing I would say that I think is really practical is if you're struggling with the isolation and depression, this is a, a if you it, maybe you could right now wherever you are you could just you say I can't control my situation. No, you can't. But you can control your eyes. So if you just make your eyes smile, and make them big, like make your eyes smile. If you do that for six seconds, try to have a negative thought. You can't have a negative thought while your eyes are smiling. So if you practice some of these things where you just make your eyes smile, it, it reminds us that we're actually in control of what we see. Yeah. And uh, those, it's not, that's not an exhaustive list, but it's helpful for what we're talking about. Very practical tips. So we hope that these tips help you today. Let's be practical, let's be deliberate in this time of isolation. And please, as Pastor Shane mentioned, let's be contacting our friends, our family, our community. Let's build community deliberately, even in a possible lockdown. Yep. Thank you, Pastor Shane, for your Easy. time. Easy, thanks, Caleb. Bless you guys.